Hey, everybody, Jim Powers with MaryvilleSaints.com and Saints Vision. And after a busy couple weeks for our basketball team, we'll get caught up with our head men's basketball coach, Jesse Shaw. And, and Jesse, you, you know, five games, nine days. And we knew going into the season that we were most likely going to see something along this line to where an extra game was going to get thrown into the mix to us. Talk a little bit about what you and your staff saw over the last five games since we've last visited and, you know, some of the positives and some of the things that you guys saw that you definitely need to work on as we head to Missouri S&T on Thursday. Well, uh, we, we were looking over the, the schedule and the number of games played, and we, we actually have played the most games in our league to this point. So, um, you know, we're kind of fortunate there. Uh, we did have to go through a quarantine and reschedule two games, but we got those made up. And, and uh, I think that uh, given the situation, I think our seasons went about as smooth as, as you can ask for, even though we've had multiple quarantines, we we've only had it affect two games and we made those up already. Um, but I, I did feel like at the end of this little seven game stretch, we were a little worn down. We took a couple of days off and um, you know, I really feel like we needed that, that win Saturday against Drury because we are on the road for two weeks straight and then having three home games and SBU and UMSL are, are tied for second in our league. And uh, they both, they both got us. And we were, uh, you know, we were kind of worn out going into Drury and, and the guys responded and, and they played really hard and shared the ball and hit shots. And, and we were able to get a win against Drury, which anytime you can do that, you got to take it and be happy. And, and we took a couple of days off and I feel like we're pretty, pretty refreshed right now for, uh, you know, early February, at least I'm hoping so. So, um, you know, I think we're just kind of managing this, this year, the best we can. It's been wild, but um, you know, I, I think the way it's turned out, you just got to be happy that we're playing games and we're winning some of them. Absolutely. And, and you know, the, the one thing that's really stuck out to me is, uh, the contributions you're getting from the younger guys coming off the bench. And I know we talked about this a few weeks ago, but even more over this last stretch of games, you know, guys like Jalen coming off the bench and, you know, Davis coming off the bench. I mean, those guys are giving you quality minutes, not only on the offensive side, but, you know, on the defensive side, bringing energy and doing some different things along those lines. And I know you guys got to be ecstatic with the performance that you're getting out of those guys coming in, supporting roles and doing some great stuff. Yeah, J Jalen is, is a junior, but uh, he is, he's a first year guy and uh, he, he has had maybe the most up and down year of anybody. He started a few games early. Uh, he's had some did not play um, nights and uh, he did not, pout he kept working and uh, you know I was telling the team yesterday he's a prime example of just keep plugging away keep fighting keep working he uh, he had a good four minute stretch against Quincy at their place and then he's been steadily getting more minutes and now he started and in, in a game where we we beat Drury and he played really well he's been playing really hard um, he, he goes through spurts where he plays really hard and then he takes breaks and he's been slowly eliminating more and more of those breaks. And he's just getting to where he's playing hard all the time. And that's really helping him. And I think it's given our, our team a boost of energy. So we've been, been really excited there. And, and, and Davis, you know, you're talking about our freshman. I think Davis has another two levels to give us. I just, I think he's, you know, extremely talented and, and uh, he's been, he's been giving us some good stuff, but I think he's got, he's got so much ability that he could even give us more and more and, you know, you look at the makeup of our roster, we got six freshmen and two sophomores out of 11 guys. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of young guys who are, are stepping up and, you know, they're not, we try to tell them you're not really freshmen anymore. This is, uh, it's February. You've been through it. You've seen it. It's, it, it's go time. And a lot, some of those guys are, are starting to come on. So, uh, you know, we're happy about that. S&T on a light week this week. I mean, not so much, you know, a, a, an off week, so to say, or anything, but just one game this week. We get the bye on Saturday. Uh, had a chance to play S&T earlier this year. We know what Bill Walker is going to bring to the table with his dudes. They're going to play. They're going to play hard. They're going to give a lot of energy. What are some of the things that you've seen from S&T from when we first played them to where we're going to see on, on Thursday night down in Rolla? Well, the first game we played them was a circus. It was our first game of the year. It was their second game of the year. 
uh, we had had 10 game, 10 days of five on five before that game. And I don't know how many they had, but obviously with this year, it's less than normal. Um, and it was, you know, it was just kind of wild, a lot of very undisciplined basketball and, and a lot of mistakes being made. And both of us are completely different teams at this point. And I think one of the biggest things uh, they were playing the seven footer uh, tomorrow, they were playing him a little bit early. They had a, a returning starter um, back and they have some other good, good, good bigs, good forwards. Uh, but I feel like he's played more and more since that day. And I think he really changes the game around the rim, uh, watching them play Drury their last time out. Uh, it was just hard for Drury to get layups. Uh, I know it sounds simple, but when you go in there and they're seven foot 265, you know, you, they're shooting a lot of pull-up jump shots, a lot of floaters. It's hard to get all the way to the rim and finish on them. And I think he he does a lot of things for him defensively. And then offensively, if he catches that ball around the rim, there's not much you're going to do to stop it. He's either going to make it or he's going to miss it. And it's got very little to do with, with, with whether you can block the shot or not. So, you know, I think his emergence and then, you know, Coach Walker just getting more time with him since then. They played a – whatever it's been 13 games and, and uh, they just keep getting better and better. And, and they have a freshman, they have two freshman guards that they start that are really talented. And those guys have gotten significantly better. And they had some forwards that were out the first time and they're playing now and they're playing well. So, you know, it's going to be every game for us is, is going to be a test. And this one's no different. No doubt about it. Well, we're looking forward to watching you guys from up here in St. Louis tomorrow as you head down to, uh, Rolla to take on the Miners and uh, you enjoy the uh, Saturday off. I know you'll be watching a bunch of games around the conference, but at least you, the guys will have a Saturday to where they're not going to be competing and give them a little bit of a breather. But good luck tomorrow night. We'll talk to you next week, buddy. All right, Jim. Thank you. Jesse Shaw joins us as he always does. Once again, the men's team will head to Rolla. 730 start down in Como as they will take on Missouri S&T. Game will be on the GLBC Sports Network and you can follow us on Twitter at Maryville Saints, we'll keep you updated all night long on how the men are doing. For Coach, I'm Jim Powers. Thanks so much for tuning in to MaryvilleSaints.com and Saints Vision. Have a great week, and as always, go Saints!